Batman's greatest enemy is someone you'd never guess. It's not Riddler with his endless Riddler trophies or his dangerous escape rooms, nor is it Ra's al Ghul constantly trying to get Batman to sleep with his daughter. And it isn't even the clown prince of crime himself, the Joker. See, because where all these villains are certainly formidable and constantly keep Batman guessing, what they all have in common is they've never actually been able to cross the line and kill Batman. Okay, maybe a couple times. But at the end of the day, Batman always shines through and defeats them with his unwavering spirit, flying off into the night to pursue his never-ending crusade of crime fighting. Now, who's Batman's supposed greatest enemy, you might ask yourself? since I totally just sidelined the Joker and the multitude of horrendous things he's done. Well, it's his greatest fan, oddly enough, but weirdly, kind of makes sense. See, because this guy, which I'll just call him Bob because his name is never said in the comic, doesn't quite consider himself to be a bad guy. Quite the good guy, you'd say. He takes good care of his parents, treats his girl right, and buys her tons of gifts, and goes to church every Sunday, and has decided that just once he wants to do something bad, like, really seriously bad. Because Bob believes that we're all put on this world with free will. We can all choose to be bad or good. But Bob feels like most people are only good because they're scared they'll go to jail or hell or some other place. Believing that a person can only be good if they've tried being good just as much as they've tried being evil, and if they don't like being evil, that means they're good. So Bob plans to do one really evil thing but doesn't know what it should be, because it's gotta be something cruel and horrible and unnecessary and motiveless, because getting caught is not on Bob's agenda. So Bob's first thought of doing something utterly despicable is to kidnap a defenseless young girl and leave her chained in an abandoned sewer main to cry out for help in the dark, till she'd eventually die from starvation. Bob even says to himself that he isn't a pervert or nothing, but whatever he can do to make her life and the family's lives worse, he'll do it. But for some reason, this isn't enough. Bob thinks to himself that his evil act has got to be bigger. Something that'll leave a mark on the world, like killing somebody famous. Bob thinks about the Pope at first, but knows enough to know that that wouldn't go well at all because there's way too much security and he's also never been to Italy. This comes to a head with Bob thinking that Batman would be the perfect celebrity to kill for the sake of convenience. Bob says to himself that it'll be no problem whacking Batman because he's got a gun gifted from his father and even knows how to shoot. On top of this, he won't leave a riddle or a coin or laugh all the way back home like Batman's villains. No one will ever know that Bob was there. There. Bob then begins to say that for all he knows, Batman could be in the Batcave listening in on him right now. But why would he? Bob's never been a criminal before, so Batman has no idea who Bob is. Right now, Batman could be out on the prowl to stop crime for all Bob knows. Leaping from rooftop to rooftop, striking fear into the guilty, and inspiring the innocent as Bob adds that he'll miss him after he kills him. Because one day, Bob will watch Batman take on villains like Two-Face or Poison Ivy, or the group of dudes who wear animal masks that nobody knows, or maybe Penguin as their fight reach a daring climax. There'll be a big fight and a thrilling chase, and somewhere along the way they'll run across a huge typewriter, and Batman will put a swift end to the Penguin's game. Batman will make his dramatic exit, leaving Penguin to ponder the error of his ways, because let's face it, crime never pays. And just for a moment, the Batman will pause, turn his face, illuminated by a single light, a splendid Avenger of the night, and then from a dark alley, or a window high up, or some other place, it doesn't really matter, there will be a glint, and then... And the Batman will be dead. Bob goes on to say that he'll miss Batman alright, but that won't stop him from killing Batman. Because just as much as he's his greatest fan, he's also his greatest enemy. And before anyone finds Batman, Bob will be long gone by then. He'll destroy the tape, he won't have a motive, and he won't leave a single clue. For all anyone knows, he's just an innocent guy. Then after that's all done, Bob thinks he'll finish college, marry his girlfriend, have a couple of kids, live a good and blameless life, and finally go to heaven when he dies. Ending the story. <laughs> now, wasn't that an utterly grim tale to talk about on Batman Day? This is a long-time favorite short story of mine because of how eerie this stranger is. It's just how he plans to do a wickedly horrifying thing because he wants to know if he's actually a good person deep down that is absolutely terrifying. Like, the way he just casually talks about murdering a little girl simultaneously ruining a family's life just for the sake of doing it sends a shiver down my spine sometimes when I read it. And part of me does believe that this guy could 100% be Batman's greatest enemy because... 
deep down Batman is human just like all of us. And for the amount of times that he can escape the clutches of some villain or another and save the day 1000 times over, all it'd really take is some psychopath with absolutely no motive to just shoot Batman in the head and beat Batman's villains to the punchline. Unless Batman's got prep time. Cause he's Batman. And with that, I hope y'all have a wonderful Batman day, and I hope y'all like this video, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and as always, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.